Right guys, so here we are. I want to give you a quick little video on how to get started on your jack-o'-lantern project. So the other day I showed you some examples of jack-o'-lanterns that I've done in the past. And we're going to continue to use pinch method, but this time we're going to make two pinch pots and we're going to be joining them together rim to rim to make a hollow ball or a hollow shape that we can then form um, to look like a squash or a pumpkin. Um, and then we're going to be cutting open a lid and then cutting out the face for our jack-o'-lantern design. So the way you're going to start this is you want to get two balls of clay and just like the other pinch pots that we've done, you want to make the ball of clay about the size of the palm of your hand. If you go bigger, it might be a little more difficult to pinch out, but it will make you a bigger jack-o'-lantern. If you go smaller and you go too small, then your jack-o'-lantern is not really going to have the size it needs to be able to cut open and to accommodate a votive candle or a tea light or maybe one of those battery operated tea lights. Um, so something about the size of the palm of your hand. So you're going to try and make both balls of clay the same size. Now if you're at home and you happen to do some baking and you've got a kitchen scale, you can go ahead and you can sit your ball of clay on top of a kitchen scale. Now I don't have a kitchen scale, but I have a postal scale here. So if you want to go ahead and make your first ball and you want to set it on the scale, you can weigh it. And then you can go ahead and make your second ball and hopefully it comes out the same weight. If not, add a little clay or take a little clay away so that they're both the same. So what I've got here is roughly 10 ounces of clay. Um, and so if you have a scale available, that will help. Um, if it, you don't have a scale available, just eyeball it the best you can. Try to make them both the same size. The thought is that if we start with two balls of clay of the same size, and we do everything the same in pinching the clay out to make our pinch pot, then we will come up with two pinch pots that are equal in size. And the most important part is that the diameters of the pots are the same because that's what we're going to be joining together. So I have two pinch pots that I've started here. I will probably continue to work to maybe round and widen this out just a little bit by taking my thumb inside and pressing it out. Um, and then um, I'll do the same with this one. But the important part is that the rims are the same, meaning the top, because we're going to be cross-hatching and slipping and joining those two rims together. And so we want them to be the same size. Now when you make your pinch pots, we want them to angle out slightly. If they angle out slightly, that's going to help us make a better join here. If you make a pinch pot that curls in at the top, what's going to happen is your, your shape is going to look like a figure eight and then it's really hard to get rid of that um, seam um, to where it doesn't show up. So if it's angled out slightly, you're going to end up setting yourself up for an easier go at joining this and then hiding the seam. Um, so uh, the taller your pinch pots, the taller your jack-o'-lantern. The more wide and rounded your pinch pots, the more wide and rounded the jack-o'-lantern is going to be. So, Again, if you are done with the previous assignment and you're ready to start this one, make two balls of clay that are roughly the same size, whether you weigh them out or not, and then make two pinch pots. When you're making your pinch pots, try to do exactly the same thing um, in each one so that they come out the same size. Especially, make sure the diameter of the rims are the same so that the two pinch pots will line up. Now, if one's a little bit taller or one's a little bit um, what, not taller, I should say, if one's a little bit wider and one's a little bit narrower, then take the narrow one and just slightly pinch out on it so that it widens it. Don't overdo it, but just a little bit until the two match up. Once you've done that, set your pinch pots aside and wait for the next video. Um, I will be doing this probably in about three or four parts, and we're just going to do it in small chunks, a little bit at a time, um, so that you can follow along more easily. All right. That's it for today. Make good pinch pots.